If you're in industrial sales in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make some real money. I'm turning dreams into reality. In the lab with the formula and chemistry. The memories spark and motivate and make the industry shake. We put the balls in the place. I'm talking one, one chance at best, yes. Painting pictures for the culture, keep the brushes fresh. Flip the club, work the drum, a passion never rests. Freedom is our teacher under pressure, now we bless. See, I was so poor for the glow. It's one art, one shot, now the future is yours. Go! Yeah, it's one art, one shot, now the future is yours. Go! What's up, guys? It's Kyle Milan, and today is Fearless Friday. If you get value out of this content, I want you to share this with one person and hit that subscribe button to stay tuned to everything else that we got going on. What better setting right now than we're on site about to shoot another episode of MFG Tribe TV. We're at an industrial automation company. I wanna to talk to you today about making money in industrial sales. So if you're in industrial sales, this is gonna be specific to you guys, manufacturing sales, whether you're doing services, regardless of what industry specific vertical you're in, we're talking about industrial sales. So. From the first standpoint, you have to understand something, especially for you younger guys out there. The industry is relatively, <clears throat> the industry is re relatively exhausted when it comes from a sales standpoint. Nothing against the veterans out there, but these, you gotta, you're coming into an industry where there's a big, large percentage of the group that is in that 40 and above, uh, 40 and above demographic. And a lot of these guys, I hate to say it to you guys, but you become complacent. You've, you've done a good job for the first 10 years, 15 years, you've worked at a company, you've got your book of business, you're happy with making what you're making, and then you're not as aggressive out there. For you younger bucks out there, this leaves the, the opportunity open for you to come in and really kick some butt, and come in with a lot of high energy and be aggressive and just start taking business away from competition. So let's look at the landscape. You've got an older generation of salespeople out there they're, they're nearing retirement age, or even if they're not, they're typically more complacent, they're a little bit less aggressive, and then you've got a smaller percentage of that group that is still pounding regardless of their age, and they're still going after it. So it's for the taking, and what you have to do is look at it from this standpoint. There's, there's newer ways of selling and marketing out there now with technology, with social media, that if you've got the energy and the drive, you can come in and just go really hard after these core strategic areas to where the, the rest of the competition, they're still doing it, quote unquote, the old way, okay? They're, they're focusing on cold calls, which is fine doing some cold calls, they're doing cold visits, which is fine doing some, but they're not gonna be utilizing things like LinkedIn. If they are, maybe they're not gonna be doing it as much. Maybe they got more responsibilities. They've got kids that are older, they've got you know family, they've got vacation, all these things going on. So if you're coming into this industry, you can be like, look, I'm gonna put my head down and bust my butt doing this and really make some money. <clears throat> so that's kind of the landscape. What you have to do is also look at the position that you're in. If you're not in, you know, if you've got, let's say a couple years experience or, or three to four years experience, you should be from a salary standpoint, you should be in the standpoint of making around like 75, 80,000 per year to maybe like 110,000 per year. That should roughly be your buffer. If you're not in that range and you're only making like $60,000 a year or below, then you need to either one, step up your skills and get a little bit of time and then leave, or you need to go back and, and negotiate things with your employer or just find a different place. I've talked to so many younger guys in the, in the 35 and under, like 25 to 35 range, and they're not making what they should be because they're working for a company that's either really small or they don't know that they should be making more. So <clears throat> looking at the standpoint from a 70 to 110, that's your base. They're paying you basically to do your day to day. You have to have some sort of commission plan. You have to. If you are not at a company that offers some sort of commission plan, what is the motivation besides your base salary to really push harder and really drive out there? So look at it from a standpoint that, from a commission standpoint, you should be in the one, two, three uh, percent. If we're in talking services, you should be in one to three percent commission on sales. I've talked to tons of people that are like, oh, it's commission on profit, it's commission on you know, P&L and all these things. That's not ideal. If you're in that situation, it's better than not having any commission, but ideally you wanna be, let's say 2% for a couple years or 3% for a couple years on total revenue. That's all you have control over. Companies that say we're gonna do it based on profit is ridiculous. If you work for one of those companies, you need to talk to your boss about it or just leave and find something better because you have no control over the profit. You have to focus on percentage of commission on sales. To you business owners out there that are watching this or sales managers, change your policy. 
Salespeople have no control over profit. That's operations, which they have no control over or responsibility, so you can't hold them accountable for that from the compensation standpoint. So <clears throat> step one, look at where you're working, 70 to 110, commission one to 3%. Now what you have to do is, is there's a, a longer sales cycle and a process when it comes to closing business in these industries. It could be anywhere from three months to three years, but you have to hit it as hard as possible and go super aggressive out there because otherwise you're gonna be just delaying the inevitable time that you close a deal. So utilizing social media, you need to connect with as many people as possible that are relevant and strategic. Go out there, make your profile great. We'll link to some videos up above about that. And then you wanna go out and connect with as many people in your target demographic that you're trying to sell to, to then get them into your feed and push out your brand awareness from there to where they start coming to you and it's less of a cold call or cold visit. So utilizing social media, number one, you still have to do cold calls and cold visits. When you're doing cold calls, Try and focus on finding somebody that at least you're connected with on LinkedIn so you can you know, jump into it and say, hey, have you seen my stuff? Maybe they say yes. Or if not, find the companies and just do a cold call. Pick up the phone. It sucks. Cold calling sucks. It's one of the worst parts of sales. But about 20 or 30% of the time, they will answer the phone. And from that time, even if they don't answer the phone, you leave a message, just keep on pounding them. Eventually, they will pick it up just from a guilt standpoint. The other thing with cold visits is nobody's doing cold visits as much anymore. From when I used to do it and from people that I still talk to, you're gonna get about 10% success rate. If you go and visit 10 companies in one day, you're gonna get about one of those 10 companies that's like, hey, yeah, I'll talk to you right now, which is great. All you gotta do is work the numbers game. Drive into an area, industrial park, drive into some you know, town and map out using Google My Maps, which is not Google Maps, it's, you need to Google search Google My Maps and you can create your own map and you can upload a list to it and plot out where people are on that map. You wanna go into that section and just hit them one after the other. You wanna to go to 10, 15 places and expect only one or two people are actually gonna answer once you go there to have a meeting with you. You have to do that. Keep in mind, the, the older generation and the guys that are veterans aren't necessarily doing that because they're like, I don't have to do that, which is ridiculous, but that's just the way that it is. So doing, using social media, going after cold calls, going after cold visits and doing that, is gonna be the first three things that you need to do. Now, once you get the opportunity to talk to somebody, do not, do not, and we're gonna put a big letters on the top of the screen, do not show up and throw up. Show up and throw up is when you walk into a meeting, you walk into a place and they're like, yeah, I wanna meet with you, show me what you got, and you pull up your presentation and you just throw up information on them. You don't give them a chance to talk. You're just like, this is why we're great, we're doing this, we got these capabilities, this technology, blah, 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 and you're just throwing up information and they're just gonna sit there like, Jesus, this is ridiculous. Do not go in and show up and throw up. If you're a sales engineer and you've got a lot of technical background, you need to tone that down a little bit. Nobody wants you to come in and just hit them with all this tech stuff. Wait for the moments to come. You need to get, be high level, talking to people about your general capabilities and then asking them questions to get their engagement because people are not gonna wanna just sit there and listen to you. They want to have their opportunity to talk because everybody loves talking about themselves and their job. So asking them questions, getting them to engage back instead of just showing them everything that you have and being like, what's up? Like I just showed you everything, now we're gonna do business. Don't go in and do that. You have to play both sides of it. So once you get to that point and they're gonna say, hey, you know what, this is an opportunity, you need to jump on this. Do not allow three weeks, two weeks, five days or whatever to do an RFQ. If somebody gives you a chance to quote something, turn that around as fast as possible. I don't care if your company has policies and procedures <clears throat> and they, you've got a way to do it with the workflow and going through engineering and operations and they've all gotta sign off on it go in there and push it hard. It needs to be like two days to turn that quote around. Unless you're waiting on something specific from another supplier where they're like, I need to give me three days to do this, you need to beat them up too and say you got one day to turn around this pricing on me. But you can allow them, you know, push them hard to get that information back to you so that way you can get the quote back to your potential customer. Just because you're first doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get it and it doesn't put you in a downside if the other people are taking longer. That gets the conversation started quicker if you have other people that are quoting on this. So you need to go hard into it, get it back to them right away as fast as possible and then start that conversation. Be like, hey, when can I come in and, and talk to you about this? Um, just show up and talk to them about it if they're not responding to you, but you have to get it back to them as fast as possible. So once you've got that quote into their hands, the next step to really drive this in and make some money is going to be follow up. Follow up through email, phone call, cold visit, LinkedIn. Hit them as much as possible till you get a response. Send them something in the mail if you have to. Continue to follow up to work that deal. 
Now, where you're gonna really make some money is don't just focus on that one deal. This is what a lot of the market's doing, the industry guys are doing is they're like, I got this one thing and I'm really gonna make a lot of money on this, so I'm gonna put all my eggs in one basket and guess what? That shit falls through and they don't get it and they're back to square one. It's like spinning plates at the same time. You wanna keep all these opportunities going, touching them, following up, setting up automation and going hard into it to just touch everything and keep that snowball and that pipeline full. That's what's gonna be the difference between making 70 to 110 and maybe 120 or 125 with a little bit of commission and making like 200, 250, 300. If you don't think that that's possible to make three to $400,000 in manufacturing industrial sales, I'm here to tell you that that is completely wrong. I can name five people right now that are friends of mine in the industry that are making over 300 grand. When I was in the industry, the numbers were even higher than that. The money is there to make it. It's up to you to decide, do you wanna take it? Because the rest of the market is sleeping. If you like this content, show this with one person you know in industrial sales and send this to your boss. We'll see you on the next one.